In this episode, I'm gonna teach you how to improve your rotator cuff strength and stability. I want you to have the capability to fight, fully move the way your body was designed to, right? Jump of a hand, I'll take you back to where my problems lie. In trouble, young adult, I've done some that made my mama cry. Out to the heavens like I'm blessing for I know he's lost. Caught in the trance and this manic depression settled in. Get up and get down, get up. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Dr. Aaron Horsig and this is episode 49 of the Ask Squat You Show. Hope training's going well this week and you're crushing some big weight. Let's get to today's question. I have a question for you, Squat You. Do shoulder stability exercises help with rotator cuff issues? Now, if we think about our rotator cuff, there are four small muscles deep inside your shoulder. Now, your actual shoulder joint is the humerus ball that sits on top of the socket, much like a golf ball sits on a golf tee. Now, there's not a lot of coverage of the golf tee on the golf ball. So the rotator cuff muscles have a job to work together in perfect harmony to create a centralization of that joint to make sure that the joint's not rolling around, the golf ball's not rolling off the golf tee. So those muscles have to work together to create stability. Those muscles don't just need to be strong, they need to turn on and work together to keep the shoulder in place, keep the golf ball on the golf tee. So the way in which we train them with exercises has to reflect that. Now, one of the first exercises I'm gonna show you today is a very simple one called sideline external rotation. Now, something like this, if you have a t-shirt, I'm gonna grab one right here. You're just going to roll a shirt up into a small towel roll if you have something at the gym to mimic this. And this is gonna help keep your shoulder pinned into a good position. So what we're gonna do, we'll get down right here. You're gonna lay on your side. And in this position, the towel roll's pinned right here to keep your shoulder in a good position. It's gonna actually turn on some of the muscles to a little bit greater degree. From here, we're starting in a parallel 90 degree position. Our shoulders pulled back nice and tight. And then we're just rotating up and then back down. Very small motion, nice and slow. And this is working specifically some of the muscles in the back side of the shoulder. You'll feel those muscles working right there. What we don't wanna do is roll that shoulder forward, or when you come back, don't roll backwards excessively. So we're nice and tight with this, slow and controlled, and sometimes I like to put in a couple pauses in a few different positions. And again, because we're working endurance, I want some high repetitions at first, maybe 15 to 20 reps. Okay, now that's the start. It's a very simple, low-level exercise. We can eventually turn this into something called a TheraBand W. So grab a resistance band, thumbs in this position, elbows by the side, and what you're gonna do is that exact same motion. But instead of just doing the motion, you're gonna have a hold. Again, the static hold in this position is working the endurance of those muscles to limit the excessive or unwanted motion of coming back inside. So <clears throat> from the side, we're here, shoulders back and down into a good position, going out to the side, holding that position. You can see my elbow stayed 90 degrees. We're not down low, we're not up too high, and we're holding that position for about five to 10 seconds. Now, if I'm doing this correctly, I'm gonna be feeling those muscles turn on really, really good in that side back part of the shoulder. Now, not only is this working your rotator cuff muscles, but the TheraBand standing external rotation. It's also very good at hitting your low trap. Now, the low trap, running right down through here is often something that's underactive in a lot of people, especially my weightlifters who have those overactive traps from doing shrugs all day long. And that imbalance between the upper and lower trap can also lead to some problems in the way the shoulder blades are moving and being stabilized and could eventually lead to some shoulder issues. So this is a great exercise that I use often before almost every training day. So we're here, we're going out to the side, we're holding for a couple seconds and then back down. Usually something like this, I'm gonna have people start off 10, 15 reps, five to 10 second holds. Eventually you'll feel those muscles turning on, you know you're gonna be doing it right. Now, <clears throat> the next exercise that we're gonna be using is a very common exercise called the full can. You'll see these in a lot of physical therapy clinics. You're just gonna use two weights, and obviously because we're in the weight room today, I don't have very small weights, we're just using change plates. These are a kilo and a half, a couple pounds basically. Now, in this position, we're gonna be at an angle and going straight forward. So there's two different motions that we can do with this. Now, most people you will often see will try to also use an empty can exercise. Now, why is it called empty can? Think about you're holding a Coke can, you're pouring it out, empty can. Now, in the research dating back to the 1980s, this was found to be a very helpful exercise at improving supraspinatus, so one of the rotator cuff muscles, the activity of it. But it's actually not a very good rehab exercise, and here's why. When you turn your, your arms down like this and go up, 
Yes, you may increase supraspinatus activity, but you also increase your deltoid activity as well. Now, the way in which this is performed, if the deltoid is overactive compared to the rotator cuff muscles, you're going to get a lot of anterior translation of your humerus bone, which means that it could increase the chance of impingement in the joint, basically things smashing together. It also, if you have shoulder pain, anterior shoulder pain, this also doesn't feel like a great position. This can recreate some pain. So what we're gonna do is externally rotate the arms, turn your thumbs straight up and down, and do a full can exercise. Now here's what you can do. You can do this in a number of different positions. Again, what's our goal? Stability with endurance component, not pure strength. We're not just going to the gym like the bodybuilders and doing some lateral raises because that's just working the strength of some of the muscles. I want to improve the stability. So we're going to be doing nice and slow, holds for a couple seconds, and then back down. Now you don't have to stay light with these exercises. At first you may have to if you're dealing with some shoulder pain. There's nothing wrong with doing 10, 15, 20 pounds on this if you're a big strong guy, as long as you're still building the stability component of using some holds in that position. Now something like this, I'd maybe would start off with 10 reps for a five second hold. And here's a couple variations that we can change it with. First, let's add in a static hold. So let's say I'm going straight forward. Instead of just doing just pure raises, how about I have one arm hold? I'm gonna do 10 reps, 15 reps with the right side, one arm's working statically, one arm's working dynamically. Then I'm gonna change it up. So I'm gonna go right arm static hold while the left arm goes dynamic. And I'm gonna do something like this, maybe two sets forward, two sets to the side as well. So again, right arm's working, dynamically, left arm's working statically, and then switch it up after a couple reps. So that's one variation. Variation two, why do I just have to work zero to 90? I don't just lift zero to 90, unless I'm doing bench press, I'm working above the head as well. So I need my exercises and the stability I'm trying to create to reflect that. So how about here? And we do a short arc motion. Maybe I'm going up, down a little bit, up a little bit, same concept. Or how about I go zero and up or 90 degrees and up. Now again, if someone is dealing with a rotator cuff injury, early on that may not be possible without that huge shrug sign. So this has to be with great technique, making sure that the shoulder doesn't shrug upwards. But this is another variation as well because we're working the shoulder blade in stability in a position above your head to reflect the need for stability with all of our overhead motions. So again, that's another variation. One more variation with this, we're gonna put a band, a resistance band loop around your wrists. What we're gonna do is we're gonna stand in this position. We're going to turn on those lateral shoulder muscles, creating stability emphasis. Then we're raising, holding for a couple seconds, and then back down. So this is basically a step above that original open can with the static hold at the top. But because we have a band trying to pull our arms in, it just adds a little bit more of a stability emphasis because I have to keep those shoulder muscles turned on and remain in their position to limit the excessive motion of coming in. You do something like this where we're pulling out, holding up here for a couple seconds for maybe five, 10 seconds and back down. This can be turning on those shoulders really well. You're gonna feel the burn. That's another great exercise. Now, especially for my weightlifters. Some of these exercises down here or even above, they don't reflect any of the different type of exercises you do in the weight room, especially a snatch or a clean and jerk. So one thing you can do is grab a long resistance band and we can do an external rotation press. So again, this is gonna be working in a little bit more of a sport specific manner. We have to have the prerequisites of being able to do all those other exercises first or else this is just gonna look sloppy. So again, you're gonna grab a band, we're at about that shoulder height. The first motion is a row. So nice and braced core, squeezing back. I'm locking in my shoulder blade, elbows at 90 degrees. I'm going to rotate backwards. Notice my core didn't move at all. From here, I'm gonna hold. Now at first, it may just be that motion of row, lock the shoulder blade into a good position, and then rotate up, hold for a couple seconds. Now as we move on, we can also put an overhead component into it. So it's row, rotate, keep that shoulder blade locked, press, hold it there. Down, back, forward. So this is the external rotation, row and press. This is something that can be very helpful. Again, we're doing a little bit more sport specific motion with this to reflect the snatch or the clean and jerk 
making sure that we're not shrugging excessively at that top position. We're feeling our muscles work hard to create the stability for the shoulder to limit the excessive motion of wanting to come forward. Again, go slow with this. There's nothing wrong with going very slow and having pauses in this. That's going to give us that emphasis for stability versus just pure strength. I see a lot of people that come up, one, two, up, back down. That's not doing what we needed to do originally to create that stability emphasis. Now, eventually, yes, you're gonna have to get those muscles to turn on whenever you're doing faster motions. But especially before our workout, whenever we're trying to prime that stability, I wanna go slow, get those muscles to feel like they're providing that stability emphasis and turned on correctly, and then we'll get back onto the barbell and start working. So that is it for today's Ask Why You Show. There's some quick and effective rotator cuff stability exercises. I hope you guys liked today's quick Ask Why You Show. If you did, please like the video, share it with your friends, comment below, and let me know if you liked it and if there's anything else you guys wanna learn about next week. Until next time, guys, happy squatting. They say that energy flows where attention goes so i pay no mind why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching so caught up in their egos these people have